Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Hi, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you all for coming. So uh, my name is uh, Hadar Isolis. I'm uh, an electronics engineer, of course. Today, a uh, robotics engineer at uh, Indoor Robotics. Just a second. Uh, so, uh, ever since I remember myself, I was building a robot, started as a kid with uh, lots of Lego, Technic Lego. Later on I took apart uh, an uh, old keyboard, connecting it to a uh, rotor switch, I made it uh, my first uh, wheel encoder, uh, reading the inputs uh, with a simple uh, Pascal code, very uh, a great moment for me. Uh, something about a decade later, I found out the world of the uh, Arduino, mm -hmm. which made a great connection for me uh, between the electronics world and the software world, and a little bit later, the world of uh, multi rotors. Ever since I'm uh, building ones, first uh, flying them uh, manually, today also autonomously. This is actually one of my first quad copters flies very well, you, as you can see, made of <coughs> some wood sticks, etc. Uh, if you recognize, there's a pointer here? Right here. No, okay. This is an Arduino. Uh, we have uh, IMU here, uh, digital compass, a barometer, we'll talk about it later. So a little bit about the history of multi-rotors. Uh, I found out it actually started in uh, 1907 uh, by uh, French brothers to, uh, as you can see, made this vehicle. They managed to take off and uh, to land. And they said uh, the flight is uh, too shaky and uh, not stable, so they neglected uh, the IT. Almost two decades later, you can see another French engineer took off and uh, made a flight of uh, 360 meters. Very impressive. Jumping to today's technology. <laughs> First man flight. And this is today Evolo, Volocopter, or something like that. <coughs> And as you all know, today, drone serves us in many, many fields. Delivery, photography, military, and uh, art, and also sport, in my city. Israel is uh, really a, a leading uh, country in this field. We have uh, a lot of uh, startups and companies if I'm not mistaken, robotics uh, were the first one to get uh, licensed to fight <coughs> autonomously in Israel and also abroad. So we are, if you're here for this, you're in the real thing. Okay, so let's build a drone. So uh, first of all, uh, I want to show you a typical quadcopter setup. Uh, this is very old, but it's a typical setup. <coughs> And uh, it is uh, uh, built of four main components. So it has an energy source, battery, has something that drives it, it has a processing unit that we'll talk about it all later in details, and we have a, a device that gives the processing unit the commands what to do. Of course, on this other side, there's a man with a remote control. So taking uh, one step uh, back, uh, I would like to understand first what what do I demand from this uh, multi rotor, multi copter, multi rotor drones. Uh, so the first task obviously is to take off, uh, hover, and land, and this is how it, this is how it's done, and we'll talk about it. I'm not just showing it to you here, 
what we talk about it in terms of uh, when we are planning mm. uh, green no, just <laughs> 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 we'll talk about it in terms of uh, uh, planning our setup this is very important uh, moving uh, forward uh, we also uh, like the quadrotor to move in space uh, right, left, forward, backwards, <coughs> which are of course the pitch and roll commands, uh, and uh, also uh, turn in uh, in place. Yo, okay, so of course throttle up, down, uh, roll, pitch, and yo. Unlike uh, if you don't know, unlike a uh, regular helicopter. Heli Normal helicopter has one big rotor and, and one small one that is in 90 degrees that allows, first of all, uh, cancels the rotational by the, by, uh, by, the, the, by the big one and also helps it to rotate. Here in multi rotors, we use a different uh, rotation uh, direction to do that. This is part of the setup. Moving uh, another step back, uh, this is here, uh, you all know three laws of uh, motion from Newton. Uh, I only want to translate it for us to our world. So the first one simply says, uh, okay, you managed to take off, you gave it a little bit of uh, pitch or roll, uh, but if you leave the stick uh, and it already has uh, velocity to some direction, if you don't stop it, it will continue. This is something we must remember. Uh, unlike a landed robot with a gear that will probably stop once you stop the command here, uh, the drone will drift somewhere. We need to take that in account when we, when we build an autonomous drone. Uh, the second one we saw earlier, and the third one basically says uh, when you hit a wall and you will will hit a wall and ground the wall hits you back so uh, buy spare parts and etc <laughs> we'll talk about it <laughs> <coughs> so uh, one of the first steps to when we plan uh, our uh, quadrocopter or multi-rotor is selecting the configuration and we have uh, several parameters to take here in count First one is the payload, and if we know the the payload we would like to take, uh, we can. I will show you later on how to calcul calculate it by uh, looking at specs and uh, of model. But for now, just like a rule of thumb, uh, you can. We can assume that more more rotors will give us more thrust, right? But on the other hand, they will add us some weight and uh, maybe make the, the motor rotor larger. Uh, a good part of it is a redundancy part. If you, if you have this drone, unless you are uh, developing algorithms in MIT for uh, <laughs> flying multi rotors with one or two rotors, uh, this one will probably crash. Also, this one, this one. But this one, those two, even this one and this one uh, will manage to continue flying if they have a motor failure, sometimes even more than one motor. Next step will be to actually select our uh, frame. And uh, here we have also uh, several parameters to take in account. Uh, the cost, of course, the budget, the robustness of the setup. Uh, so again, we must take uh, account that we will crash our uh, multi-rotors during uh, our test uh, development. And uh, uh, we will also like to take uh, in account the maintenance uh, thing. We are developers, so we would probably want to take it apart, add components, remove components, connect again, uh, leave room for electronics, more electronics, uh, sensors later on when we make it autonomous. 
and uh, also here uh, the fi uh, okay efficiency and noise uh, again the rule of thumb as long as the uh, bigger bigger drones bigger uh, rotors propellers means uh, less rpm uh, less noise more efficient something we can take in account okay so uh, next step will be choosing uh, our motors so we have Generally, we have two types of motors. We have brushed motors and uh, brushless motors. The brushed motors are uh, generally used in these small ones, uh, small toys, or uh, also not toys, but uh, the small helicopters. Uh, they are less efficient. They are lighter a little bit. Uh, the dri their driving is a little bit different. I will show you later. And brushless uh, is the opposite. Uh, Looking at a uh, motor spec, and this is where things start to uh, combine. This is actually a spec from a manufacturer of a motor. This is another motor. Uh, we have a lot of information here, and it's a good start. The, the manufacturer tells us my motor is, is working at 11 volts, and I, I'll show you later what it means in terms of battery selection. And uh, you can put, uh, if you want, an 8-inch eight, eight propeller or a 10-inch propeller with a pitch of uh, 4 by uh, 0.5. And if you do that, you will get a thrust from one motor with this, for example, propeller. You will get a thrust of uh, 490 grams. So if you're building a quadcopter with four of these, so we already can know that we uh, we can lift, or the, the total payload can be almost nine kilo, uh, two kilos. Sorry, uh, this is uh, actually amazing. But we we would we don't want to take the one hundred percent. We should aim to the uh, area of fifty percent. So uh, I, I will explain in terms of control and the PID later. Uh, so this is a start. And if you already if you have the this uh, information, you already you also know the size of your copters, right? It's simple geometry, 80 inch, four of these, six of these, and uh, it's uh, sort of uh, the chicken and the egg dilemma. You need to do several iterations to understand the total payload, and then the, uh, the size, and how I showed you here. So uh, if you selected your motor, it's, it would be, uh, a very easy task to choose the driver. So this is a simple uh, driver for brushed motor. This is a driver for uh, brushless motor. And you need to take in count uh, two numbers here. One is the total amps that it can drive. And second is the uh, voltage. It, it's written here in terms of uh, cells, how many cells of the battery in serial. And I'll show you in a minute what it means. So this uh, driver, supports two to six cells and can give you a continuous uh, current of 30 amps. Going back, just to, to, to close the, the, the entire setup, by this spec, we know how much, if I look at this, the current uh, column, I know how much current I will draw in about 50% Okay. So we are okay with it in terms of uh, driving. Let's go. Uh, so again, you need to choose the propellers. More blades means uh, the motor will work harder, more current. We need to take that in account. Uh, I would not uh, spend too much time on this one, but <coughs> take a look at the spec from the manufacturer and build accordingly. But uh, generally speaking, uh, we have several materials. Again, it, uh, it, uh, we have carbon fibers, uh, blades, for example, that will cost more. Uh, we have uh, setups to assemble more easily the props. We take it off, take it in account. Again, uh, larger props means uh, more efficient, less noise. OK, and battery. So battery is a very important part in the sorry in the setup. 
if you if, if you're new in this field I would tell you immediately go for lipo um, uh, you also also have this one maybe other technologies I'm not aware of but uh, basically lipo technology for batteries means uh, drawing a lot of current with uh, maintaining the voltage of the battery uh, which is something that you cannot do with regular batteries uh, in the in the currents we are talking about and uh, so you have number of cells here let's take a look at that so this is a three cell battery cells on the battery uh, the voltage is 11.1 so that's that takes us back to the uh, manufacturer spec we saw earlier and uh, we have it, it tells us how much current how much uh, discharge rate, this charge rate we can take and the main thing we need to take from this uh, slide is uh, these two equations so we saw earlier how much current we will need so in this term if we take this battery we are okay <coughs> and we can assume and calculate approximately the the, the flight time we have this is of course for power, if you maneuver a little bit, you spend a little bit more. If it's not the battery, then do you take the step on it, so like, like we are, we are for? Uh, it's a lithium polymer. Ah. Maybe right. the one that blew up uh, from uh, the, was something ah, similar to that. Before, but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I will talk about it. This is a, a battery that you need to, uh, you need to uh, keep the charging and discharging uh, use a proper charger and discharging when you uh, storage it you need to use a special uh, case in case it is required for that I have this video showing you uh, doing nothing right and the battery just <laughs> yeah, so something happened there a short because of the high current the battery can give you this is very dangerous and you need to take care of the <laughs> okay, uh, flight controller. This is the processing unit, and today there are very, uh, there are so many, really so many uh, uh, types for different uh, uh, causes for the uh, targets. Uh, for now, I'll tell you if, you if you're aiming to build an autonomous. Uh, I would recommend going for uh, a PixSoc, a PX4, it's the same hardware and a different stack. Uh, they support uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, external uh, components. And inside these uh, flight controllers, there are several uh, sensors. So gyroscope is actually the first and the basic one and the drone you saw, I, I built, I showed you earlier is uh, built all, only on a gyroscope it was a nice project that someone took uh, the gyro board out of a Wii uh, console and they could, wrote some code in Arduino and this is the actual code I put in my open source of course uh, this was the first um, this is the basic sensor you need. After that, we have uh, a gyroscope measures angular velocity. It means how how fast you rotate in each of the axes. Accelerometer uh, gives us the um, acceleration in each of the axes. Yeah. And uh, magnetometer, digital compass, of course, power meter for height, uh, low resolution height. Is the gyroscope that will give you stability, or is that a sensor? What do you mean by stability? No, because it's when you, when you use the gyroscope, it's like a... Oh, it's yeah, so with the simple uh, integration of the gyroscope data in time, you can uh, calculate the angle you are in. The problem here is that you have uh, it's digital and you have drift. So over time, it will not it will drift. 
it will be uh, it, it can be uh, very accurate but uh, you complete it by the, using the accelerometer and uh, a filter between them common filter or something like that um, okay we have also have GPS uh, optic flow if you want uh, range finders first speed I will talk about it sorry so a very important uh, method to do on a quadcopter if you build yourself is the PID tuning. And all of the, most, most of the flight mm -hmm. will come will come with the custom, uh, with already is parameters for PID in it, but you will need to tune it according to your setup. Every weight you add uh, or dis uh, distribute your weight differently, you need to uh, tune it, maybe even tune it for the different uh, axes the different PID. I'll talk about it. Uh, some uh, some flight controls ha has this uh, method built in, which is nice. Sorry. PID is a proportional integral and derivative. It's a it's a basic controller. Loop controller for closing loop. Uh, in the control theory. Uh, look it in Google and we'll see. Uh, we have uh, many, many uh, GUIs <coughs> to set up our, uh, to connect to our flight controllers, to set, uh, set it up. They, they also have wizards, so it's quite easy. Um, the most important thing here, uh, and we'll talk about when we move to autonomous uh, flights, is the Mavlink. Mavlink is a protocol that, uh, for example, autopilot uses between the craft and the, the ground control it can be either your uh, application, this is actually an application called Tower, or the base station if you use a laptop. Yeah. Oh, this is the tower. Yeah, so gimbal is a nice uh, accessory. Uh, if you're doing photography, if you have a drone uh, with the gimbal, you know what it does. But I'm showing showing it here in terms of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In terms of autonomous setup, this might be useful for us to mount sensors if we'd like something to take into consideration. Okay, so let's make it uh, autonomous. What do we need? So this is the typical setup we saw earlier, and uh, we didn't see him, but this guy was here all along, flying this setup. And if we are looking at uh, three blocks of uh, autonomous architecture, I don't know, uh, this pink, all this setup, all the quadcopter we talked about, represents the maneuverability, and the, the processing unit. It's doing the basics uh, today, not so basic. You have also GPS, and F, uh, you, you can do a semi uh, autonomous flight with it, load missions to it. So it's also uh, almost all, uh, all autonomous. Eh? But this guy was uh, is representing the perception and the processing. He's flying. So this is what we are missing. So one thing you can do is purchase an off-the-shelf drone with an SDK. This is something we showed in previous uh, meetups. It's something we did in uh, indoor robotics. You know me. Uh, what you see here is. Uh, we showed it in the one meetups. What you see here is uh, actually. Two robots uh, controlled simultaneously using a uh, Ross bridge uh, with the SDK of the DJI. This is DJI Mavic. We also have this one, it's also uh, from DJI. It's the brother of this one. It's a Tello Education. Edu. Edu. They have SDKs, you can develop with it. Uh, also, you can purchase uh, something like that. 
helicopter drone kit, you can buy this kit for something like 500 euros. Uh, it already has everything you need, the battery, propellers, they might have made the calculations for you, they also give you a brain to develop on it. Uh, the disadvantages in this kind of uh, solution is that you are uh, you need to use their framework uh, and you are limited to their setup in terms of sensors, weight, etc. etc. Also here the Intel Arrow. So if you decide uh, to build your own drone, make it honestly, you need to remember a few things we talked about, get spare parts, use prop guards, uh, use calculators, online calculators such as eCal. It's a great calculator for uh, all kinds of, uh, not only motor rotors, also um, rovers and uh, airplanes, fine planes. Uh, tune your PID, perform manual flights. This is something very important uh, before, not only for drones, uh, any, any robot you build, very recommended to fill it. Drive it yourself, understand the limits uh, and uh, what it, what your capability is uh, before you write code to it. Uh, take the orientation of the robot in count. So we have a robot that can be at almost any orientation in space. Right? And I, if I put here, uh, for example, a rangefinder, and I tilt it a little bit to go forward, which I must do, then it, it points somewhere else. Okay, so we need to take that into account. This is why I put the gimbal and take into con consideration to use the gimbal. Take into account vibrations. This setup uh, vibrates. It can uh, influence your uh, readings. Dry test, it, dry test it on your table, of course. Distribute to set up for better debugging and uh, have a fast safe mechanism. This is, if you, uh, this well, uh, propellers spin very, very fast. Uh, use, it, use it safely. Okay, so uh, one thing you can do before even uh, building the drone is using a simulation. If you use ROS, if not, you can start now. Uh, ROS has a great, is a great platform for developing robots, it's a robot operating system. The Zebo is a simulation uh, platform. What you see here is uh, Hector SLAM package in use. We have a single drone here, you, you can see, you might see it, right? Uh, before we, uh, starting to build, this is, you can uh, develop your code for even building something or ordering it. This is a drone. Doing, using uh, ROS, this is the uh, Arviz uh, visualization tool of ROS. I can see that it has uh, uh, RPL, uh, some LiDAR on top of it. As you can see, it moves, rotates, so things to take into account. Thank you. Uh, next uh, lecture. So, there is questions on the list? Yeah. I wanted to ask you about uh, the latest advances in uh, the power source. So, are we stick, sticking with the liquid for a long time? And where is it going to the, the 10 minutes, 20 minutes? So, when, okay. So that's a great question. And energy is the holy grail in terms of uh, multi rotors. You spend most of your energy to hover. And uh, uh, there are uh, many develop, uh, developments going on, uh, as much as I can tell. LiPo for now is the solution. There are some hybrid solutions uh, that uh, startups are doing. Um, I'm not aware of something you can uh, buy off the shelf today. Not, not uh, stable enough. Okay, next, next question, there's another one over there. Thank you very much.